Okay, y'all, serious question. This is something that I have been perplexed by over the years. I want to know, what does it mean for a woman to submit to a man? Like, what does that submission actually look like between two grown, cognizant, intelligent, heterosexual individuals in your everyday life? What does it look like for a woman to submit to a man in her everyday life? And I'm not talking about in the bedroom because both men and women can choose to be submissive or dominant in the bedroom because that's what they enjoy. What are the ways in which I am submitting to you and why? Why are you entitled to my submission? Is that supposedly the cost of your love and protection? That's a very interesting bargain. Like, I'm trying to understand how it's in any way different from, say, a boss and an employee, or a ruler and a servant. Like, you can be masculine and she can be feminine, and that can be a wonderful thing. But why is there this hard-pressed need for submission, specifically? Like, do you love her, or do you want to control her? Do you love her, or do you want to own her? I'm genuinely perplexed by this because some of y'all are very adamant and very vocal about having a submissive woman and I sometimes wonder if it's like a misplaced need for dominance because you aren't competing with and dominating other men. So for the women who deem themselves submissive, what does that submission look like? And for the men who require submissiveness in their woman, what does that submission look like and why do you require it? And please don't reference the Bible or any other source in terms of why you feel women should submit to men. I want to know why you as a man feel that a woman should submit to you. Black Ram 313 back at it again. You know why? Well, it's because this is therapeutic, man. Back again with another video, hence another therapy session. Today's topic and title is Be Dub struggles to understand why it should submit to a man. Looking at the video, it's clear, not only to the person on the video, but we know that the BW shares in the same sentiment. The BW sincerely, fellas, I mean, sincerely struggles with the idea of submitting to a melanated man. Now there's no problem Submitting to JC, its savior, the image of Cesare Borgia. It has no problem understanding and practicing submission to its boss at work or the pork chop eating pasta and most of all, daddy government. But when it comes to you, oh no. When it comes to you, submission is a great mystery. It's a problem. It's difficult at best when it comes to being submitted to the everyday melanated man. Now, before I get into cooking the beast at the beginning of the video, you know that this is a ratings channel. Therefore, you know what has to be done done put your rating in the comment section for this particular fee beast let me know what the ratings are scale from one to ten and i'll give you my rating right now so here's my score again feel free to add yours i'll give the creature a 6.5 that's right now it would be more but the fake up, I mean, makeup is a lot. But I believe that the creature is above average looking when it comes to beauty, in my opinion. And to keep it all the way real. And I must say that physically. She is a very beautiful black woman. I love her complexion. The next point I got to make before we get into this heat. The heat of this video is that personally, and you might think the same way as well, I don't think that we need the B-dub to submit, nor 
should we want the B-dub to submit to us? Reason why is simple. What is it worth? This mysterious submission that it can't give. What is it worth anyway? Unless we're talking about putting money in my pocket, there's no real benefit for the beast to submit to you and me. What is the value of submission, I ask you? What's the value of submission from a ran through carousel rider with a bad attitude and smelly vag from overuse? Can you answer that? What is the value of such said submission? What is it worth? What do you get out of it? That's the question. I don't need it and don't want it from you. Submission from a 304? No, thank you. Let me know what you think. Moving along, let's get into some heat. The creature proposed a question. There was a question asked, and that question is, why should the beast submit to you? And we're going to answer that question. And as I answer the question, can you answer that question as well? Why, theoretically and ideally, because I'm saying we don't need it and we don't necessarily want it, but why should the creature submit to you? in general and why should the creature submit to a man like you that's the question that's the question that was asked and black room 313 will answer ya again you can answer in the comment section also and then the creature set forth a rule a rule set in place to answer this question that was asked and the rule the creature said is that no Bible passages should be used. No scriptures. The beast said, no, no, no. Why should submission be given and do not use the Bible? Don't use that. No scriptures. No, no scriptures necessary for this conversation. Although I think it would be good. But it's not even necessary. But again, the rule is not to use the Bible. It wants to know outside of the book why it should submit to you, to me, to us in general. So let's do that. The only way Black Ram 313 knows how, and that's with a list. So let's go with the five reasons why theoretically the B-dub should submit to the melanated man without using the Bible. And you know the succubus is a pure demon because it's opposed to scriptures, right? In the book, there's too much light for the dark soul of the beast. But we'll honor the request and not even use the book as I get into these five reasons why the B-dub should submit to the melanated man. Here we go. Number one is because nature tells you to do so. You are physically stronger naturally. Any dude that wanted to could impose his will on the creature. We have the bone, chemical, and muscular structure to do whatever necessary given the situation. Here's an example as a man how you're stronger physically with your bare hands, the creature will be helpless to do anything against you. Another example to go along with that. An analogy. Would you, as a man, back away from a brown or Kodiak bear that can stand up and reach 10 feet tall? And as we know, Kodiak and brown bears can weigh sometimes over a thousand pounds. If one showed up, and all you had was your bare hands, would you back away from the Kodiak or brown bear? Of course you would back off, which is arguably a form of submission, or at least fear and deep respect for the strength of such a creature. Now hear this, our strength is 10 times more than the succubus in many cases, and that also 
goes for the rotten Chiquita banana, the rabies snow bunny, and Mei Ling and Nim. With your bare hands, you could do whatever you wanted to do, right? As the Kodiak or brown bear, you are no match for it, neither is it a match for you, speaking of the fee beast. Number two, as to the reason why the creature should submit. And this has to do with logic versus emotion. Logical versus emotion now. You have the logic and reason. This is why you have and can do things such as create constitutions, laws and rules. And you can organize and create a fair society idealistically and practically. You can problem solve. You can reason things. You can create so much from your very mind. I'm not saying that the beast can't do this at all, but definitely not on the same scale as you and I. Has it or can it build skyscrapers and jet engines? I think not. See, the world is ran on logic, not emotion. Now, emotion has its place now, but never place emotion above logic. The creature is emotion. You are logic. You already know which one is above the other. So quite naturally, you know that logic takes the lead. You know that logic takes precedence over emotion. Very simple. And this is what you get with the real peel brought to you by Black Run 313. Number three as to the reason why the creature should submit to you is because you created everything. Everything that can be seen, everything that can be touched, everything that can be heard comes from your mind. The mind of man has created everything in this physical realm. Only thing that was here first was the raw materials. The beast cannot use the toilet or brush his teeth or even walk down the street without the items that you have created. And these items facilitate the creature's life, makes it easier, makes it bearable. You put air conditioners in homes and cars. You created so much for the creature's benefit. And of course, if it wasn't for you, the creature would have nothing. But due to your benevolence and creativity, you freely gave these things that came out of your mind that you have created that allows the beast to live in such comfort. Again, you are the one in who constructed society. But the beast believes that it's stronger than you, that it's independent. Although it only has a job because you created one for it to have. Think about it. And this leads me to the next point, number four, which is the fact that the creature cannot live without us. Again, the clothes on its back, the food in its stomach, all the way to what it drops in the toilet comes from you. If the masculine declared war on the beast today, it would cease to exist. But this rebellious, helpless creature thinks that it's better than you and doesn't need you. Although its existence is completely dependent upon you. Amazing, isn't it? Point number five. Last but not least. Obviously, mentally, physically, and spiritually, it is dependent, speaking of the creature, dependent upon you in every single way. Nothing that the creature has, nothing that the creature does, nothing that the creature is, is separate from you. The beast cannot take raw material and construct cities, nor can it govern itself, nor society alone. Everything that it has, has been given to it. The beast created nothing and is completely dependent upon everything that you, that we have created. Short recap. The reason why the beast should submit is because you're stronger physically and naturally. You're logical versus emotional. Number three, you created everything. Number four, the beast cannot live without us. And number five, it's naturally dependent upon you. 
to why should it submit? Those five reasons should suffice. But let's go forward and answer the question why the creature should submit to an individual man to personalize this conversation. And it's simply because nature itself tells you to submit, to submit to that which is greater than you. Submit to that in which and to he who you are dependent upon for his guidance, a specific guy, a specific man, for his guidance, for his wisdom, for his protection and provision, all of which can improve your life greatly. And without it, you are empty. Now, I admit men have built a system in society to where you don't have to depend nor submit directly to a man. But that does not mean that you should not. Because almost every man is an important aspect to the system in which the beast benefits from. Plus, we know that it's more beneficial to have him in your life than the other way around. You bring more to the creature's life, to the Phoebe's life, to the succubi's life than it can bring to yours. Much more value because you are much more valuable. And that's the end of my argument. And these are just a few reasons why. Feel free to add to the list. But all in all, fellas, hear me out. It is too late to even really have this conversation about submission. Why? Because the beast is not for the house, but for the streets. The beast is not for you, but for the community. And you only provide and protect what you own, what belongs to you. The succubus has made it loud and clear for decades that ownership is out of the question. So what are we talking about? So why should we even be discussing submission, specifically submission, having a conversation with H to the Izzos? See, the beast is for the streets, a street walker, not a wife. Those days are over. Many of us are going monk, dating out or using the catch and release method. Guys are wising up, realizing that the creature is a huge liability, a burden, a headache. The juice is not worth the squeeze. So if you're going to deal with the creature, you first do that by not taking the creature seriously, but keeping it casual and occasional. To pump and let the beast dump the catch and release method by Black Ram 313 because we don't date. We recreate and we don't need the beast's submission. Smash and let the creature dash. Black Realm 313, I am out.